All right. Hey guys, I was going to take you outside because it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood <laughs> and the birds are chirping, but then I went outside and I froze. Um, so maybe we'll do an outside session one of these Saturdays when it's not so cold out, but I'm very excited. Spring is coming and I just feel like we're all about to become complete butterflies. So by the way, I am Dr. Shereen Idris. I am a cosmetic dermatologist. I am based in New York City and in your YouTube now. And I am so excited that you're joining me. Welcome. If this is your first time watching a video, aloha. Although I don't know why I just said that. Um, I'm not in Hawaii. In my brain, I am in Hawaii. In reality, I am not. But the birds chirping make me feel like I am. Today, we are going to do a deep dive into niacinamide. Why niacinamide? Because in 2020, I think niacinamide got a new PR agent. <laughs> niacinamide is basically one of those ingredients that have been around forever. It is not something new. It is not the newest discovery in the world. And I find it fascinating how people bring it up like, I have discovered a secret, and that secret is niacinamide. As if it was like some sort of like, je ne sais quoi. Niacinamide has been around for a very long time, since the inception of time, actually. And we have known about its benefits for several decades. And in the past year, it came back to light. And the question then becomes, does it have merit? Is it worth its salt? Is it worth its weight in salt? Whatever that expression is. Um, because I find that within the beauty industry, ingredients have this sort of revolving door. It was hyaluronic acid for a very long time and people will argue that it still is hyaluronic acid, which I hope people are finally realizing is not worth all the buzz. Most currently now, it's niacinamide. And so I figured, why don't we do a deep dive into niacinamide, understanding what it is, what it does, who it helps, what it's used for, and then the right type of formulation and concentration in which you should be looking for when using it. Sound like a plan? Let's go. Okay, niacinamide is a vitamin B3. It is a water-soluble vitamin it is a vitamin that our bodies does not produce. We cannot get it internally. We do not produce it internally. We get it usually through our diet in the forms of legumes, which I always found was a, was a fancy word of saying in English because it's legume in French. It just means vegetables. Um, nuts, meats, poultry, fish, pretty much everything. But that's where we get vitamin B3. And it is extremely rare in quote-unquote you know, more developed countries um, to see niacinamide deficiency. Usually systemically, if somebody is deficient in vitamin B3, there is a condition known as pellagra in which you get certain skin lesions on your skin. You have massive diarrhea, counterintuitively, even though you don't have enough of the nutrient, you just have massive diarrhea. You can become anemic, you can become sun sensitive and you can get, you can have headaches. Um, and so the treatment of pellagra is to take niacin pills, also known as nicotinic acid. But the issue is it causes intense flushing. You will look like a tomato, complete tomato. It's a cousin, it's a sibling, it's a twin, whatever you want to call it, it is niacinamide, which is also known as nicotinamide. So you have niacin, which is nicotinic acid. Then you have niacinamide, which is nicotinamide. Okay, so let us focus on niacinamide because in topical skincare, that is what we find nowadays. And that is who hired the most expensive publicist in the beauty industry because it is everywhere these days. Um, so with niacinamide, the beauty is you do not get any flushing. So that's great. Um, if you take it orally, you can definitely treat pellagra without that nasty side effect. Now, topically, it can do many different things. So yes, it is worth its hype to a certain extent. 
And why do I say to a certain extent? Because everybody always likes to believe that once you have a good thing, more is more is more is more is more. I don't know about you, but if I've eaten, and this has happened, a vat of Nutella, which in my mind is a very yummy good thing, not a good thing technically for the planet or for your body, but a good thing for your brain, I die afterwards. I get comatose, I feel lethargic, I feel like S-H-I-T. Same goes with niacinamide. The higher the percentage doesn't necessarily mean the better it is. So what are the benefits of niacinamide? Number one, increase your skin's immunity. How does it help to increase your skin's immunity? By increasing keratin production and then keeping the skin layer intact and protective. Your skin is your largest organ. When your skin is broken up, whether microscopically or macroscopically, meaning like an open wound, you're more likely to get infections, cuts, nicks, eczema, flare-ups, etc. So by keeping the skin intact and well connected, you're more likely to increase your skin's immunity function to better protect you. So that's number one. Number two, it helps with the lipid barrier of your skin meaning it increases ceramide productions. And ceramide, if you want to think of it, is like the cement holding the bricks together. So if the bricks are your skin cells, ceramide is the cement that is gluing all those bricks together in order to really keep it nice and firm and supple and moist. Now, by increasing ceramide production, it is retaining moisture in your skin, and that can help with certain conditions like eczema where when the moisture is lost, the eczema flares up, the skin cracks open, you can get an infection, and it becomes a vicious cycle. So by having the right ceramide content on your in, or on or in your skin, you are decreasing your risk of having an eczema flare up. Number three, it does help reduce redness. And the way it does this is by reducing inflammation. And this can be seen with patients with acne. People who have inflammatory acne, bumps, pimples on their face, using niacinamide at a certain level can help reduce redness. And it regulates oil production. So if you are an oil machine, a well-oiled machine, and your body likes to make oil, Niacinamide can help to regulate your production so that you're not using a million blotting papers throughout the day to kind of absorb that oil. Make sense? All right. And lastly, it can help even out skin tone. Niacinamide is one of those ingredients that I like to call like your friendly friend your friend that's always there when you need it to give you a boost because it's going to be there to boost the other ingredients up such as vitamin C, such as kojic acid, such as arbutin, to help even out your skin tone. If it was a horoscope sign, because <laughs> I love to do these, I feel like I'm Miss Cleo on your Saturday morning. Um, niacinamide, I think, would be a Libra, okay? Because niacinamide is not just a genuinely nice person or sign, um, it tries to really be friendly. And niacinamide tries to be friendly because it tries to mesh well with other ingredients. It's not a hostile ingredient. It's not a crazy erratic ingredient. It's one that's sort of like a slow and steady that says, hey, vitamin C, hop on. I'll make you do better for your skin. It's one of those. I'm in, I'm in, a, I'm in a weird mood. <laughs> just, just bear with me. But that's what niacinamide does. And so um, it would be a Libra for shiz. I love Libras. One of my best friends is a Libra. Hey, oops. Okay, so that is niacinamide. Is there proof? Yes, there is proof. There are various studies that have been done throughout the years. Um, there was one in the International Journal of Dermatology in 2013. There was another one in 1995. Those are just two double-blinded studies, which are usually the best kind of studies, where people don't have any bias errors, usually, for the most part, where they showed that 4% niacinamide twice a day was equal to topical antibiotics, clindamycin, and that 2% niacinamide did on its own decrease oil production. So this gets me to my earlier point in which more is not more. More is not more. For the people in the back, one more time. More is not 
more. More is not more. More is not more. More is not more. I find it mind-blowing where people now think they're all chemists and that they all have a very deep understanding of a very, very complicated matter that requires years of years of studying and a PhD involved to be like, oh, that is a 22% niacinamide formulation. So therefore it must be really good. No, 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 no. 22% is going to make your face blow the F up. And in the process, I think people and patients have been trying to put so much on their face at higher levels of concentration, causing their face to just <clears throat> blow. And this is where I have issues with certain brands that are ingredient driven. They highlight the ingredient rather than act like a chef to formulate the various ingredients into a beautiful recipe. Um, making the consumer, i.e. you and me, believe that more is better because it's not. Anything above 5% in general is probably overkill. And I have seen it now more often than not where higher levels of niacinamide can cause inflammation, irritation, and breakouts. All of the things that it wants to actually treat. And so the poison is really in the dosage you have to be careful about how much you're actually using. So don't automatically think that a higher number means that it's better. It's the way it's formulated and quite frankly, with what else it's formulated. For this intent of today, I'm going to just focus on products that highlight it as an ingredient, but down the road, we will be doing a lineup of products in which various ingredients are mixed together because I do think ultimately you're trying to minimize how many products you're using to treat your conditions in consolidated steps, where you're not over treating it with over using the same product ingredient in various products, but you're using those ingredients wisely. Less is more. Combine and deliver. Don't use too much, okay? So let's jump in. Um, starting with the cheapest ones which one would think, oh, they're cheap. I'm going to go ahead and buy them. I'm not going to care because they're so cheap. Who cares if I waste seven bucks? And they throw it on their face and in the process, their face explodes. Um, although I have seen people who do love these products and it's nothing against the brands themselves. I actually think these brands deserve a lot of merit for what they've done to the beauty industry. But what bothers me about these particular products that I'm about to show you guys is that they are touting a higher percentage, which doesn't necessarily mean better. So just kind of a heads up. Uh, so the Inky List, do not shoot me. But niacinamide, 10%, $6. I wrote it on here, here. It also has hyaluronic acid. It's like two double whammies because most likely the person who's going to be using this is going to be using other serums with hyaluronic acid in it, overdoing that. It's a discussion for another day. But 10% niacinamide, not necessarily the best. Then we have the Ordinary, which is 10% niacinamide with 1% zinc. And I appreciate the 1% zinc because that's acting almost like an anti-inflammatory to the 10% inflammatory dose. Um, what I don't love, it's slightly milky. It does, after a while, if you really rub it in, Oh, like I'm so pale guys you hardly see anything on me but I wish I could show you better I don't know how it forms like this kind of whitish film and it just feels tacky so it's not my favorite one again high strength vitamin okay yes it's high strength but does it make it better no better higher does not are not synonyms so that's number two and then there's Paula's Choice, and I love Paula Choice's products. This one is a booster, a 10% booster. It goes for, I think I wrote it here, 44 bucks. Um, I will commend Paula because she mixed it with Panthenol, which is great. It is vitamin B5. I had spoken about it before in my Sika pair, uh, La Roche-Posay's products, I believe. Um, and it does help to decrease transepidermal water loss, which is a nice, adjunct to the ceramides that this produces. So I 
comment and applaud that it's mixed together but i don't think 10 percent is what my oops i just spilled a lot Ugh. well you know you shouldn't hey if your face can't handle it try it on your body honestly because you're less likely to get inflamed in other parts of your body with this than on your face not the same thing with retinols but might as well use it on your body so that you don't waste product so that is paula's choice 10 percent Moving on to other ones, which I think have merit because they are within the 5% range. And I have gotten this question quite a bit. I like the one by Glossier. Okay. This is the super pure. It is niacinamide and zinc. And this is at 5%. This retails for 28 bucks. I think they did a great job with this particular product. Um, some of their other products I'm not huge fans of. This one particularly, I thought they did a wonderful job. Let's see. Hold on, let's do this. I feel like such a blogger. <laughs> and then it's out of focus. That was a fail. But yeah, it's a nice one. There's no residual tackiness. I was very impressed by Lucia's product. Number two, I really did also like Alpha H's. Vitamin B, tripeptide, or copper tripeptide, niacinamide. This vitamin B is niacinamide, vitamin B, now you guys know, but it also has 1% panthenol in it as well. So like Paula, these people are trying to minimize trans epidermal water loss uh, with a 5% combination. So this would be similar to Paula's Choice Booster, but with 5% rather than the 10%. Um, it's extremely lightweight. The color, I know it has a dye and people are not into dyes, but I just find it just beautiful to stare at. Like, it's really pretty um, for what it's worth. Number two, it has a beautiful slip. It does spread evenly. Oh, and it feels so smooth when it's applied. It's really, really nice. Um, the biggest issue other than the dye is that I don't love the scent. It has a weird kind of scent to it. Moving on, SkinCeuticals. Now, this one's expensive. This one is retailing for a whopping $112. But I like this one because it has 5% niacinamide as well as a tripeptide concentrate in a glycerin base. So it is extremely hydrating. Um, and I will show you guys when I pump it into my hands. So you can almost use this as a very lightweight moisturizer if you really wanted to in hot tropical environments. If you're somebody who's wearing a mask all day and you don't want to wear a thick moisturizer because you're having too much occlusion with the mask and the heat, um, or if you live in a very hot and humid environment, this is a nice one. It's a very lightweight, hydrating kind of moisturizer that is like a two for one. So there is that one. And then Elta MD has a PM therapy. This one's 35 bucks. This is just a moisturizer on its own. It is niacinamide as well, I believe at 5% with antioxidants. I've tried this. I found it to have a little bit of a chalky feel on my skin. People love Elta MD though. Um, I don't know why with me for some reason, I always find it to feel a little bit like it's sitting on my skin rather than getting fully absorbed. Um, if you ask me, how do I use this product? I would say start with once a day, see how your skin responds. Do it after cleansing if you're using one of the serums. If you're using the moisturizer, it could be your final step after your serums. Um, but if you need a thicker moisturizer, I would use it for sure on top of that. Um, guys, this was fun. I felt very hyper this morning. I definitely had my coffee. I don't really drink coffee that much. I had my Wheaties or whatever you want to call them. So yeah, recap, she's a Libra. She just hired a new publicist. She took over the skincare world in 2020, although she has been around for the past couple of decades. And more is not more are the biggest take home points when it comes to niacinamide. Um, and finally, if you do take a niacinamide supplement, it has been shown to help as well to minimize your risk of developing certain types of skin cancers. So internally, its antioxidant effects are almost as powerful, if not more powerful, than when applied topically. Um, I am Dr. Shereen Idris. I hope you guys have a beautiful 
Saturday and I hope everyone out there is looking forward to a brighter future where we can all one day hug each other very soon. All right, have a great day.